Hi folks and welcome back to the Storm and Cellar. Alright, looks like the U.S. Air Force has a new strategic bomber on the horizon, the B-21 Raider. Named after Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Doolittle's Raiders when he and his 16 B-25 bombers attacked Tokyo during World War II. This is the first bomber since the B-2 Spirit was first delivered to the Air Force 30 years ago in 1993. Most of this video here is the B-2, but the actual B-21 will be unveiled at its Palmdale, California plant on 2 December 22. Inquiring minds want to know, why the new bomber? Well, the current bomber fleet has 157 aircraft. As with all older aircraft, some are becoming more expensive to operate. The U.S. Air Force believes they'll save money in the long run by retiring aging aircraft. However, Capability is the real reason the B-21 is coming on board. With advanced air defense systems like Russia's S-400, which is being exported to more countries around the world, or the Chinese DFZF anti-ship weapon, the B-21 is needed to negate the effectiveness of those missiles. So let's take a look at this video and I'll give you my thoughts. The U.S. Air Force's aging bomber fleet got not one, but two bits of good news this week. The first new B-21 Raider bomber is complete and has entered ground testing. Of course, all ground testing has been completed some time ago, before IOT&E, or initial operational testing and evaluation. Paving the way for a first flight later this year. At the same time, Secretary of the Air Force, Frank Kendall, says he wants an unmanned bomber that costs half as much as the B-21, one the service would send on its most dangerous missions. What they're talking about here is that the U.S. Air Force is looking to build stealth combat drones to complement the B-21. That would be probably three quarters of the size, something like that, but unmanned, of course. Testing typically works to test and verify everything possible while a brand new plane is still on the ground. It involves validating mechanical components such as the flaps, rudders, ailerons, refueling probes, and landing gear work correctly. It also involves making sure the various electromagnetic systems such as radar, navigation systems, and communications don't interfere with one another. Software testing is increasingly part of the ground test process particularly with an aircraft like the B-21. Like the F-35 software testing is something they will want to get right immediately. Software can delay testing, operational capability, and add significant costs. The bat-winged aircraft, like its predecessor, the B-2 Spirit, lacks a conventional aircraft shape and relies on fly-by-wire technology, FBW, to stay aloft. FBW is a flight control system that uses computers to process pilots or autopilot inputs and send corresponding electrical signals to the flight control surface actuators. If the computer software that makes constant adjustments to the plane's flight profile is buggy, an aircraft like the B-21 can't even get off the ground. Fly-by-wire technology is used by such aircraft such as the F-18 and the F-16. The B-21 is set to be revealed to the public later this year. Its first flight has been pushed back from December 2021 to sometime in mid-2022, but that's a minor setback for such an ambitious program. Northrop Grumman was awarded the contract by the U.S. Air Force in 2015, and despite supply chain uh, issues many industries encountered, the B-21 has stayed right on track, which is pretty incredible in an acquisition process. Currently, there are six b 21s in various stages of production at the Air Force's Secret Plant 42 in Antelope Valley, California. Six aircraft at the plant, which means they have $3.5 billion worth of aircraft sitting there. I'm sure they're beyond the DET&E developmental test and evaluation phase and will soon probably begin IOT&E, or initial operational test and evaluation of the aircraft in the acquisition uh, phase. Uh, sometimes they'll do both parts simultaneously, but apparently they're moving pretty quickly with this bomber. The B-21 will rely on much of the advanced stealth technology already fielded 
uh, to bring the cost down significantly. Also, the B-21 design will be very similar to the B-2. However, the B-21 will offer much more sophisticated stealth capability. It will have improved radar absorbent coating and the same engine systems as the F-35. However, unlike the F-35 and F-22, the B-21 without a tail section will also uh, be almost invisible to radar. Now, although no aircraft is totally invisible, uh, the B-21 will also carry an electronic warfare suite to further help evade enemy radar detection. The B-21 will eventually replace the 62B, 1B Lancer bombers and 20B, 2A Spirit bombers that the Air Force currently operates and will be capable of conducting both conventional attack and nuclear weapons delivery missions. The U.S. Air Force relies on its current fleet of bombers, the B-1, B-2, and B-52 bombers. The plan is to retire the B-1 and the B-2. The $640 million dual-capable strike bomber will take over those roles and deliver both conventional and nuclear munitions. The Air Force wants at least 100 B-21s and ideally up to 200 as it becomes more and more likely that the service will have to face China and Russia in both conventional and nuclear warfighting scenarios. Secrecy has been paramount since uh, the contract was awarded in 2015, but the RFI or request for information does call for at least 4,000 pound bomb loads and 1,500 nautical mile combat radius. The nuclear role, the B-21 will be able to carry the B-61 variable yield nuclear gravity bomb and long-range standoff nuclear cruise missiles. In the conventional role, it can carry long-range anti-radiation missiles, which would hopefully negate China's growing naval fleet and a GPS guided JDAMs or Joint Direct Attack Munitions. However, the exact payload capacity is still uh, classified. The new bombers will be augmented by 76 1960s Arabi. 52H Stratofortress bombers that could serve another 30 years for a total of 90 years of service, with 100 years of continuous service as a distinct possibility. U.S. Air Force will retain the aging B-52 with its conventional capability and standoff strategic capability. In other words, it won't do deep penetration, but will instead fire air launch cruise missiles from a distance outside enemy surface-to-air missile coverage. At the same time, Kendall has signaled he's interested in an uncrewed long-range bomber, ideally one that costs half as much, or even less, than the B-21, $713.6 million. Kendall, quoted in Air Force magazine, says he'd also wants a stealthy drone capable of flying just as far, ensuring it could accompany a B-21 Raider into combat. If an unmanned drone can simply tag along with a B-21, mimicking its flight path, while remaining a minimal distraction to the human crew. It could allow bombers to deliver many more munitions on target or potentially strike more targets. This could make it a trutable, meaning the Air Force could live with losing one in combat if the mission was important enough. For example, a B-21 and bomber drone on a combat mission might suddenly lose a critical appointment with an airborne refueling tanker. Instead of scrubbing the mission entirely, the crew might turn back to save the B-21 and themselves while sending the drone on a one-way mission. The result might be the loss of a dollar 300 million aircraft, but if the target were important enough, it might be worth the loss. Enemy air defense systems are becoming much more sophisticated, so the B-21 is expected to become sort of a, a mothership for these heavily armed drones. Now, the $300 million drones will be able to launch from other bases and link up with the B-21s and will be used for high-value but well-defended targets that they wouldn't want to risk a crew or a B-21 itself. The B-21 Raider should begin flying nuclear deterrence missions starting in the late 2020s, with the bomber drone following shortly thereafter. I'd really like to see the AR or area refueling on the drone while in the soup or weather or during bad turbulence. That'd be a hoot to watch. The result will be a more flexible, stronger bomber force capable of delivering everything from dumb, unguided iron bombs to hypersonic weapons and thermonuclear weapons. Oh, and the B-52. The B-52, it seems, will be around forever. Yes, the old B-52 Stratofortis, or BUFF, 
will be around forever. My guess is we will see the B-2 around a bit longer than the U.S. Air Force would like it, like it to be around as well. As the U.S. enters into a new Cold War with China and Russia, I believe that increasing the U.S. Air Force bomber force is a necessity. The Air Force wants 150 to 200 B-21 bombers. I don't see that happening. My opinion is they'll eventually have to settle on 100 or less B-21s. In the day, as the Air Force asked for 150 B-2s, they had to settle for 21. Since one crashed, I believe they'll keep the remaining 20 B-2s and also keep the current 72 B-52s well until the uh, mid-2050s. The B-52 will be flying when it's almost 100 years old. I know there's a question out there, why not retire the B-52 and keep the B-1? Well, it's deemed costly and impossible to replace the swept wing joint on the B-1, where the B-52 can be reskinned during wing fatigue. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think by leaving your comments in the section below. So until next time, make sure your takeoff and landing is equal.